Greetings everyone, this is Mike with Savage Kingdoms, Fire in the Head Productions. I just want to do another video regarding our new Kickstarter campaign called the Savage East. Now the Savage East is a campaign expansion supplement book, so it will cover the eastern continents of Hassan and Amamju across the Dragon Sea. Um, here's a map of it really quick. All right, as you can see, this is one of our pre pre preliminary maps, color maps, uh, one of my original maps I drew, I don't know, probably seven or eight years ago, nine years ago. Um, because this campaign setting, I don't know if I've mentioned it in past videos or in any uh, writing online for the various Savage Kingdoms Facebook groups or whatever, um, and I don't think I mentioned it in the foreword of the, of the core rule book either, uh, or at least not in any detail, but this campaign used to be for Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder. That was the primary systems uh, that the setting, that I designed the setting for, going all the way back to 1979. So now the core cool rulebook, which was our Kickstarter campaign back in April and May, which was uh, was awesome. I'm still reeling from the amount of support we got there. We got about 400% of our, you know, four times over our targeted goal, and allowed us to do a lot of things. Um, the soft cover rulebook, um, I probably showed it in a past video, but I'll do it again. Is right there. This is a proof copy, actually. So this is not the official copy, although the cover is pretty much, I think it's identical actually. Uh, there were, weren't a whole lot of changes. There were some typos and formatting errors. That's the back cover that we had to fix. Um, so basically the soft cover core rule book uh, is, is, should be out, should be in people's hands in the next month or so. We apologize for the delay. But this thing is, uh, this stuff as some of you may already know, is much more expensive than you think with printing and hiring, art, hiring artists, hiring editors. Um, God forbid paying yourself a little bit if you can um, because you're wearing about five different hats. Uh, but it's a labor of love, so it's, it's, it's worth it. And obviously it gets frustrating sometimes, but life does. Even the, the things we like the most, there's always frustrating little moments that get in the way, such as the imperfection of life. But in general, 99.5% of the time, it's awesome. It's a labor of love, and that's why we're still doing this. Uh, because I really want to show you all fans of Savage Kingdoms, or at least fans of, of medieval and Dark Ages fantasy in general, the eastern part of, of the setting. The core rulebook covered, again, Astagonia, the western continent, which is kind of a, a European flavored um, setting. And uh, the Savage East will cover, as the name implies, the eastern part of the known world. Uh, pr primarily the continents of Imanju and Hassan, which I just kind of showed you. Hassan is that big continent right there, that main bits of land. And the uh, land bridge, or the big peninsula at the bottom, uh, connecting it connects to an, another continent, and that's Imanju. So at the very bottom, you can see the top of Imanju, that, which is you know probably 5 to 8% of it. If, if, well, probably more like 5% of it. Uh, just to point out some cool features, I guess, on here really quick. You can see the Empire of Zaramad. That is primarily dominated by the Sea of Sand, the known world's largest desert, easily. The Sea of Sand, uh, yeah, it's probably, it looks like there, it's about half of, of the Empire, but it's probably more like 40%. Um, but it's a very, Zaramad is a very Persian-inspired in, Empire, and it's about one and a half to nearly twice the size of the Laurentian Empire in the West, which is more of a Romanesque sort of feel to it. So it's it's pretty big. It swallowed lots of cultures and peoples, and uh, and has sort of made them a collective part of the culture, as well as uh, adding to the tax pool of the emperor, of course, which is ultimately what it's all about, really. Uh, and then we have Assyria. Assyria is a uh, an independent kingdom that's sort of Arabic in flavor. You might can tell by the names. And then we have R at the bottom, and it's R is not a pirate kingdom as it might imply. It's actually an Egyptian flavored realm. The end of that peninsula right there in the middle of your screen. Uh, it's actually spelled A R. That this map just has two R's on it. And I, <laughs> honestly, uh, the reason we got rid of one R is because of the pirate jokes. Uh, but they'll still be there, and that's fine, probably. So, 
Uh, but but really, it's actually an Egyptian flavored rum. It's actually the one of the first seats of human civilization. Uh, the very first seat of human civilization would be just to the north of R, and that's Zarkon. Those cultures are very similar. Zarkon was a the first human realm to really rise above small clans living in caves and and crappy shelters and that sort of thing. It was uh, the rise of the human city-state. Uh, it's sort of Egyptian in flavor, but really it goes even before that. It's really more Babylonian or Mesopotamian. And Ar simply was a province, one of the nine provinces of Zarkon that actually rebelled in this horrible war known as the Wizard War or the Shadow War or the, or the War of Light and Darkness. It has many names. Um, that happened over 2,000 years ago, about 2,300 years ago, and it uh, it won our its freedom, but it uh, it destroyed much of the land. Uh, pretty much all of Zarkon was destroyed. Zarkon was ruled by these nine witch lords, these nine rulers of the nine provinces, the nine city states that rose to great influence. And obviously, they uh, after a while they couldn't get along. Most of the witch lords were power hungry. They were sorcerer kings. Some were priest kings, priests of Zur. A god of darkness and, and serpents and uh, forbidden knowledge. And if you're getting a bit of a Conan feel to that, that's uh, for good reason. The, um, the the setting in general, and as I've probably said in the foreword of the core rule book and in probably a previous video or two, is heavily inspired by Robert E. Howard as well as uh, uh, George R. R. Martin with Game of Thrones. And of course, uh, our the buddy of, of many of us, We're not really, I wish he was my real buddy, uh, during his awesome time on this world, uh, J.R.R. Tol Tolkien. Tolkien. Now, uh, Tolkien was, um, has inspired most of us, but he really inspired mostly what is now called high fantasy. Savage King Kingdoms, as you probably know, and probably as the name hopefully implies, is more of a pulp sword and sorcery setting. However, it does span into high fantasy somewhat. We do have the she, which are like elves. We do have the Durgar, dwarves. Uh, we do have uh, we do have other staples of high fantasy. So basically, even though I call it heroic sword and sorcery, and I'm I'm proud that, to call it that, it really is. Uh, it does have a good bit of Tolkien inspired high fantasy to it. Now, to me, Tolkien is the grittier form of high fantasy. Uh, some high fantasy, you know, is not a, I'm not a huge fan of, such as, uh, I don't know, Dragonlance and uh, Harry Potter. And I, I don't mean to, to uh, slur those uh, fandoms because I actually respect them for what they are. And, and, I, and I enjoy them to some degree, but uh, they're a little, you know, and they're supposed to be. They're a little too high fantasy, and so therefore they're not really influences of um, Savage Kingdoms. So Savage Kingdoms, again, really think... Um, Conan the Sumerian, you know, Robert E. Howard, uh, Game of Thrones, and, and some of the darker, grittier stuff of Lord of the Rings. Um, so put all that together, you've got a pretty good feel. But the reason I, I went to went there again is that the, the eastern continent uh, is really even more Conan-inspired than the west, which was the core continent introduced in the core rulebook. That actually probably has a little more of a Lord of the Rings feel to it. Uh, because a lot of Conan's uh, stories, the original ones that Robert, that Howard wrote, uh, took place in more exotic cultures of the east and south. In other words, east and south of Samaria. Samaria was in the pretty far north. And uh, and it was basically Howard's way of exploring exotic cultures and religions and languages and other cool things, uh, decadent things that would happen to his, uh, his northern... Uh, Nordic Celtic adventurer Conan uh, and uh, so as such most of the stories uh, have that influence of uh, sword of yeah sword and sorcery and uh, sword and sandals and uh, a lot of the se several stories take place in desert realms others in thick jungles of Kush and Punt and other places like that so these continents really are probably closer to being Conan-esque than even Estagonia is um, so, yeah, so we want to introduce this to the gamers out there to show uh, that there is more to the setting of Savage Kingdoms and 